The 1932-33 Bodyline Ashes series is known as one of the most acrimonious series in the history of Test cricket. Accounts of the tour indicate that the animosity spread off the field with the Douglas Jardine-led English tourists and the Australian players choosing to have nothing to do with each other socially. But a little-known account would call this narrative into question. Chronicled in the book The Summer Field, a history of English cricket since 1840 by Mark Rowe, an exhibition at London's Library and Museum of Freemasonry in 2012 recalled a remarkable event. Following the volatile third test at the Adelaide Oval, which saw Australian player Bert Oldfield retire hurt from the match after being struck in the head by a bouncer from English fast bowler Harold Larwood, Oldfield, suffering a fractured skull, concussion, a subconjunctival haemorrhage and a cut to the head, returned to recover with his family at his home in Sydney. In the days after the test, while angry cables were being exchanged between the Australian Board of Control for Cricket and the Marlebone Cricket Club, the victorious English team continued their gruelling tour, playing Ballarat and then moving on to Sydney to play a tour match against New South Wales. The aforementioned exhibition, Game, Set and Lodge, which profiled the history of sport and Freemasonry recounted an extraordinary incident. Controversial English captain Douglas Jardine and Australian wicketkeeper Bert Oldfield were Freemasons, members of the fraternal organisation, the Masonic Lodge. Douglas Jardine was a member of the Old Wickhamist Lodge for ex-students of Winchester College, while Bert Oldfield was a member of his suburban Roseville Lodge on Sydney's North Shore. It is reported that Bert Oldfield, still sporting fresh scarring from his right temple after being struck in the head nine days earlier, invited Douglas Jardine to his weekly lodge meeting in Roseville on the night of Wednesday, the 25th of January, 1933, the night before the start of the tour match. Little else is known of the event Neither Oldfield or Jardine wrote about the matter, and it is not recorded in any biographical works on the pair. But it appeared that Oldfield and Jardine maintained friendly relations throughout the ensuing years. Two decades later, catching up for a reunion luncheon with Harold Larwood in 1953, when Jardine had returned to Sydney on business. The last time they would all meet before Jardine's death in 1958.